Yeah, four years. Four years, four years. I am now going to head overland, more bicycling into Myanmar. Well, I'm here in Kaliwa. Uh, took a rest day here. Figured it was a good idea after my crazy hard days on the dirt roads. Body needs a break. And today when I was looking up just stuff about the border crossing to see if I could find the hours to see if I could get there late, I discovered that there was some issues at the border recently because there's been heightened security. And the, on the Indian side of the border, the Indians had like a big strike and they uh, damaged some of the border buildings or something like that so the border was shut temporarily but it opened back up but then just this week there was a big drug shipment that was caught on the indian side i think coming from myanmar into india and so there is talk in this article that i read that they were going to close the border again but can't find anything else online besides that so i guess i'm just going to wing it and go to the border i might get there tomorrow it's a big day it's about 150 uh, kilometers uh, I think exactly 100 miles from this town. So yeah, it'll be a big day. I don't know, I'll see how I feel once I'm on the road. I may call it short. It's just I know there's no real places to stay officially, which I don't really want to risk right now because I'm now about 20 days over on my visa. So see how it goes. Otherwise, Cali was a really sweet little town. I like it here. I'd stay longer if I had the time, but gotta go where the rivers meet. <laughs> this is just down the street from my guest house here. Bicycling down on the way out of town at Caleb Kaliwa, and they stopped me and invited me to tea on the street. This place is an interesting spot. I'm not sure exactly what it is. There's the fire station right there, and I've passed through here a couple times. And they've been gambling, playing cards, having tea, um, just generally chilling. It's sort of like a village hangout, I think. I have a feeling they're not going to charge me for breakfast. I think that's what they were trying to tell me, but even if they did, it would probably be under a dollar. This lady's been serving me and fanning me for most of my time here, apparently. Keep letting me know I should eat more and more. Good way to start the day. Potentially my last day here in Myanmar. Morning Road is taking me up alongside this river. Pretty beautiful. Lots of water moving through it. There was some really big boats coming up part of the way, but it seems like they have stopped or not coming any further right now. Maybe they are, maybe I just haven't seen them. Anyways, uh, pretty, pretty nice spot. Threatening terrain all the time. The road's not in great condition, but it's 90% better than the road that I was on before on the dirt. My things aren't rattling. It's quite smooth most of the time. There's a few potholes, but that's not no big deal for me. And they're even doing some road work on this one as well.
I just wiped out coming onto this bridge right at the entrance there, right in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> they were a bit shocked, probably a bit entertained. It's pretty funny. I fell over, my stuff fell out of my bag here, and I just got a bit dirty. But uh, apart from that, I think I did the little cut to my handlebars. Everything else, everything else should be okay. I think. Hopefully. I'm right on the border of India and Myanmar here. This is close to the Chin state, so there's apparently a lot of churches around. The Chins are majority Christian. I don't know if this is actually a Chin neighborhood or if just Christianity has come here, but there's a bunch of Baptist churches around and some others. This is Kampat, and they have uh, what, done what some other towns have done, which is really nice, and they've left big trees down the whole road, which makes it quite pleasant. Nice and shady. Actually, just keeping my eye out for a uh, good looking beetle nut place. All right, so this is a little beetle nut stand here, and I've been meaning to stop at one for the whole time I've been in Myanmar. These are everywhere here, they're like on every corner, beside every restaurant and the way there's where they sell beetle nut and I haven't actually tried it yet so I'm gonna give it a go it's final day in Myanmar gotta try it Hello. can you describe what what is here this is uh, beetle nut it is beetle leaf bitter leaf or how do they call it? I don't know exactly this leaf and they mix it with some kinds of tobacco and it is produced tobacco juice yes. tobacco juice yes of course has it been chewed or is it no actually it's not exactly juice it is mixed with water so we can like a juice okay so it is for i think that's lime right lime is lime of course and this is for juice from some kinds of lemon or and all these are mixed together and packed with this leaf and they chew it. That is how they they get it. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to try just one of the, the most common one that people chew. Okay. I think this is the most common one. Yeah. I don't mean. No. What they will prepare for you? Yeah. How much? Oh, just one. Oh, just one. Yeah. I, I don't think I want any more. I don't know. I don't know. How many do you usually chew in a day? Uh, it it depends on people who take it. Some may choose around 20. Okay. 20 to 30. Okay. So. This is the beetle leaf with, what is the, the hard thing? Is that the beetle nut? <laughs> this beetle nut and some tobacco. Okay. And so you just stick it in your mouth, side of your mouth, and you chew it? But don't swallow it. Yeah, you spit. Okay. <laughs> you, you chew the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> Tastes are sweet. And then my teeth turn red. Doesn't become red yet. It's the first time. Pretty good. How much would somebody chew of these per day? Do people chew this all day long? It's not, not the whole day long, it is it takes around five minutes for one for one. It's like around five or two minutes, something like that, two or five minutes. That also depends on the people who choose.
consume it. Mm-hmm. Some consume it in this. this <laughs> I feel like I've become one step closer to becoming Myanmar. <laughs> and you have to be careful sometimes when you're biking along the road because people spit outside the window or they'll just throw their juice outside of a bus. And if you're cycling along and they don't see you, you could get hit by it. I haven't got hit, thankfully. I sort of like it. I'm not going to get into it though. <laughs> Do you chew? Of course. A little bit? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? Does anybody not? She doesn't. She doesn't? Yes. <laughs> so yeah. this is Tanaka, which almost everybody wears at some point. It's sort of a cooling face paste of sorts. And this is the wood that it comes from. I felt a small little sort of buzz from the beetle nut. Felt pretty good, pretty relaxing. Um, not very strong at all. I guess you gotta chew a lot of it if you want to feel something. Um, but it, uh, and these people are rad. I'd like to stick around here longer. I don't think I'm gonna take up the habit of beetle nut, but uh, I'm glad that I actually tried it. That's about all I can say right now. Most of the bridges I've been coming over have just been those wood ones, which can be pretty sketchy because my tires can get stuck in between the cracks. And then there are these, these metal ones. These ones are pretty good. These ones are great actually with their big metal platforms. There's other ones that have really small ones that have sort of a cattle guard on them and they're really noisy and super bumpy. Yeah, this is the country I'm in. Over there now, up in the mountains, that's India. It's so right along the border here. This river probably runs out of India. And I think I'm about 20k or so from the border crossing, Tamumore border crossing. Feeling pretty good. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a century, so about 100 miles, exactly 100 miles. Let's keep riding here. It's 100 miles on the day, 150 kilometers or so, and I'm at the border. I think the checkpoint is through that maze there. I'm not sure if it's still open, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put the film in there, so I'll uh, see. Maybe I uh, won't talk to you until I'm in India, if they let me through. I look fairly presentable, right? Should be good. Fingers crossed. Into the maze. Closed? Closed? <laughs> the border no closed? What time does it open? So I'm guessing you caught that. The border was closed. <laughs> Not sure when it closed, but uh, it looked like they were just packing up. I was probably about half an hour or an hour late. I guess it opens at six in the morning. So that basically means I did an X five to 10K on the day, probably 10, to bump me up to the 160 range. Hi. Hi. 
think there's a motel up here somewhere where I'm gonna hopefully find a nice comfy bed. So my neck is quite sore from that fall that I had earlier. I'm guessing that because they have their sign in English that they will accept uh, a foreign guest, which not all Myanmar places do. You need a special license. Some towns don't have any. These guys, I think they're good. All right, take two, crossing the border into India. Let's see if this is gonna work this time. Yes, this is the, oh, some people go that way, some people go that way. <laughs> Minglava. Minglava. See how this goes. So I'm going to turn off the camera because I don't want to cause any issues here. We'll see you in India. And I'm in India. Just had to come through one other checkpoint where they uh, seem to want to look at my passport just to say hello. Um, but now I'm pretty sure I'm through that. Still in weird borderland, but uh, I'm in India, in Moray Town. I'll tell you about that border experience in a second though, because that was ridiculous. This is by far one of the more bizarre border crossings coming from Myanmar, Tamu, Myanmar into Moray, India. Uh, I arrived last night at the border, but it was closed. And so I got out here this morning, maybe about nine in the morning, and got to what I thought was a border crossing where a bunch of people were walking across, and it was clearly a border crossing, but apparently it was only for locals and local foot traffic at that. It just looked chaotic. I went to the checkpoint, and they're like, oh no, we gotta go down that way. Pointed me down this down along the border, so they sent me to this iron bridge. Along my way there, uh, I was basically on this dirt road that sort of paralleled the border and I could see clearly that people were just going right across the border through little openings in this like corrugated iron fence. And it just looked chaotic, it looked like people were loading shipments of fuel and stuff and just tons of illegal traffic across the border, it was a mess. And then I got to another immigration checkpoint which was Myanmar immigration. And they look, looked at my passport, looked at my visa and stuff, looked through it, and then they sent me further down the way, India checkpoint that way, India checkpoint that way. Okay, kept on going, got to a point where all the traffic was on the other side of the road and I realized that I was in fact in India. I was like, okay, this is weird. I just crossed the border, what's going on here? Went further down the road, saw the iron bridge that the guy had been talking about. Went to cross it, which I thought it was crossing back into Myanmar. Saw the Myanmar like border, another immigration checkpoint. Asked them, India, India. And they sent me on to India, which is big, fancy, like immigration checkpoint thing. Sign saying for passengers to offload and all sorts of fancy, fancy immigration stuff, customs and everything. Completely empty. Nobody there. Nobody using the facility. So there's tons of people crossing at this footbridge, tons of other people crossing in between, all sorts of chaos. Fancy immigration checkpoint, empty. Showed up there and they were sort of surprised. He's like, oh, you came on a bicycle? Yeah. And there's one guy sitting at a, at a, at a desk. He took my passport, took my info down, and looked like he didn't know what to do, and he was sort of stalling for time, when then two guys showed up, who were apparently the immigration guys. India! More 
and they went through my passport and I thought it was just going to be like, boom, I'm into India. But eventually the guy realized I didn't have an exit stamp from Myanmar. He basically just said, okay, you just have to go back to Myanmar, get your, get your exit stamp, but I'm going to stamp you into India anyways. So he gave me my arrival stamp and then I had to go to customs. Customs guy had two big books outgoing and going, made me fill out a form and then sent me on my way. And at that point, I probably could have just stayed in India. I never went back to me in Karatmar because I had my arrival stamp in India. But the guy at immigration had taken my passport down and I wasn't sure if he was watching or paying attention or what the deal was. But, uh, I decided to go back to Myanmar. I was sort of really hoping to not have to go back to Myanmar and get my exit stamp because I knew they were going to find me and charge me. That is, of course, what they did. And the guys were sort of excited that I'd overstayed my visa because it meant they had to do some paperwork and they had to take some money off of me, which was $3 per day for 19 days. So it was $57 I had to pay. Yeah. I only had a $60, so they actually got me changed through US dollar change. They were friendly, they were cool. I was stoked that they weren't harassing me for staying over so long. Apparently I could stay up to 90 days and they'd still charge just $3 per day. And then over 90 days, it's $5 per day. And then they sent me on my way and then I was back in India. I had to go through one sort of military checkpoint and then boom, here I am in India. Got a cheap uh, guest house room here and uh, pretty tired. Other weird thing about this town, border town, there was nowhere I could buy rupees. I had a bunch of Myanmar chat. There's nowhere I could buy rupees. There's multiple banks here, but nobody just on the street doing exchange. Nobody, none of the banks would exchange my money. It was just like bizarre. What kind of border town does not let you exchange the currency of the country you just came from? I did run into a traveler from Austria who was happened to be going to Myanmar and she was happy to exchange some money with me. So now I do have some rupees. It's about three in the afternoon and I'm really tired. Obviously massive crazy day yesterday. Welcome to India.